coding series where we've been creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. We're working on a website for the Western Friend organization, the official publication of Quakers in the Pacific, North Pacific, and Intermountain Yearly Meetings. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm recovering from a cold a little bit. We've been streaming these <coughs> again recently, these live coding sessions uh, through the Code Buddies community. It's a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer to peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. <coughs> Excuse me again. So, we're scheduling hangouts where people can join and see what we're up to on the coding front. There's lots of different kinds of hangouts. Uh, looking at anything from data science, you know, JavaScript, there's Flask uh, sessions. <clears throat> so yeah, it's really a, a community-oriented, um, well, development. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. Essentially, there's silent hangouts, teaching hangouts, and collaboration hangouts where people can either work together or learn from one another or just hang out and know that there's other people who are interested in doing this similar kind of work. We're working on GitHub. All of our project source code is available here. And I need to, um, at the beginning of this session, I was going to take a quick look now at how to update our require our dependencies and see if we can do those all at once. We're not um, deploying this code anywhere that's sort of production sensitive, so I believe it's okay. Uh, that we lag behind a little bit in, in our dependencies. So let's go ahead and uh, start off looking at that. But first, T. I hope I throw it up a little bit. Okay, I have a Goa chai tea today. So we'll create a new branch. Let me make sure everything's pulled down. So I'll escape this. And one moment. Excellent. I wonder if I just SSH add my git credentials, if that'll help. So I don't have to put this in so much. Do that in a moment, but first let's pip uh, in the show. And create this branch now. And in case things don't work, I'll just be able to roll back. Now, I think there's, Pippin should give us a command to, to do this. All dependencies on packages. Um, we want to update all packages. Whereas with pip, you have to kind of do this thing pretty manually. We'll update the specific package and hope that they're compatible and things like that. Hmm. There's not a top list uh, result here. I think there was an advanced section.
Oh, well, let's just try pip him. I mean, other people are searching for this. I'm not sure why there's no answer here. Ah, okay. Let's see if this is working. I didn't read it quite closely, but this seems like a good API. Okay, and uh, let's see. Getting used to the new Twitch layout. So I'm keeping an eye on the Twitch chat. They redesigned the interface. Okay, what do we got? Brain tree out of dates. Skipped. Maybe it's just that. <clears throat> Pretty nice. If that, if that really worked and it can solve those constraints, let's double check at the code here. So we got brain tree updated, path spec added. Regex. And out of curiosity on GitHub, what's Pillow, so it didn't seem to handle pillow. It's low severity. Severity, and we're not deploying this code anywhere. Hmm. It didn't get wagtail either. That's strange. Well, I will selectively update that. All dependencies are now up to date. I would assume it would include all dependencies. Path spec. Regex. Maybe I just didn't get down to Wagtail, but did. Two point six point three. So yeah, I'm not sure why. These updates aren't working. Let's
don't spend too much time on this because I need to get some progress <coughs> on our task at hand. Hello. Pull request to install 6.2.0. So that didn't even get handled. Man. This is not true. It's reporting this with false. Well, I would just create a, an issue or support request here. Not sure, what's the deal? These are just a little bit problematic when you see a commit graph like this also. Hmm. Kenneth reads started off the project and looks like then slowly with has withdrawn a little bit. Hmm. Okay, well so we so be it I just uh I don't want to break. I don't want things to break, so I was hoping to use the the pipinv uh, constraint solver so I could update these in a way that's safe, like the pillow update in Django. Whoops. Let's just wagtail Django. Hmm. That could be part of the deal. Let's see the pip file. Maybe lacking some of these low level. Right there. Okay. Capital D. It's just straight not working.
I can see why they wanted to pipe that to X clip, but for whatever reason, X clip didn't work. This is weird. <laughs> Probably another tab.
<laughs> that's, that's huge, yeah. Abort the issue. Mm, let's see how I can do this. Interesting. Let's see if it'll take it. Huge. Yeah. Okay. And they recommended to include the output of that, but clearly that's just not practical. I'm gonna try without verbose. Like that's. This was more accurate. I think it gives a little bit better of a listing of the packages that are outdated. There we go. <clears throat> ah, but it only gets the last, so, so it's just skipping a bunch of them.
right, well, so we're off to a false start so far. Couldn't quite get the core of these updates to uh, handle it in one simple way. It sort of doesn't increase my uh, confidence in Pippin, but I've had a good, good experience overall, but um, yeah, maybe it's, I should reconsider using it. One moment, let me adjust my cabling here. Okay, well, let's, so, what are we, 30 minutes in? And the session timer's not working. In any case, let's go ahead, and I guess the progress to that we made was to open a support request. We'll see. Um, to do with that next because I would like to get these minor fixes um, from Wagtail and then this 2.7 release this is around the corner so I'd like that to work all right the main feature we're going to work on today for a little while just to get a start and experiment a little bit is on the Western Open uh, website, which is currently made with Drupal, we have a subscription form and a pricing structure. And essentially, people can subscribe to the magazine online or receive print and PDF copies of it. When you subscribe online, you get to read the most three recent issues fully whereas people who are not subscribed have um, just a little bit of a teaser text so the subscription form currently looks like this where you select from a subscription type and it calculates the amount and you decide whether you want yours to recur which is nice we're gonna actually leave that out but uh, this is something that CBCRM does for us and unfortunately in this migration from Drupal to um, to Django and Wagtail I don't have a clear way of bringing CBCRM along uh, it's a really good uh, constituent relationships management platform for nonprofit organizations it's just written in PHP and primarily works with Drupal, WordPress, and Django, or no, uh, Joomla, which we're not using any of those going forward. But I think there's some light on the horizon. We might be able to integrate CBCRM back into our platform via the API. More on that later if, it, if that emerges. So the main thing is you have this PDF or paper type and whether or not you want to pay the full cost or if you're low income or international. Then it looks like we, we require the email address and we have some um, fields that are dynamically updated, yeah. I'm not gonna be able to do that. Oops. I don't want to introduce a big uh, JavaScript framework right now. And that's another nice thing about it. CBCRM is it handles that for us. So we're going to be pretty much a static form, primarily oriented towards people in the United States, just like we did with the um, bookstore, but allowing international addresses. Okay, so let's switch back to master real quick. Create a branch. And I think we'll start with the model. I did receive an email from Mary 
with the pricing structure. So I'll, I'll just quickly check the pricing structure to make sure um, that I don't uh, interfere with that by building a model that won't support it, particularly the fact that we've got PDF paper in both and low income. So I want to make sure that all those moving parts are accounted for somehow. One moment. So she sent me a sort of a spreadsheet. I'll put this on stream in just one second. Okay, it's a big spreadsheet here. So, donations are another feature, I believe. No. Or not, she's wanting to combine them two. All right, I'll have to look at this and uh, consider some more detail. This is a curveball, I wasn't expecting that. subscriptions and in, in uh, so the main axes are subscription duration and I don't know if some of this information is actually confidential to be honest but oops yeah there we go At first, I believe I'll hard code this in. <clears throat> but since we have this consistent structure, I believe this could be presented in the admin interface. Yeah, and so we're doing a flat rate discount across the board, so that's helpful. And she did the math for me. Good. So I think the approach I'll take will be to start with the model, what a, a subscription instance will be, and then have a hmm. yeah, these are choices, choices, yeah. a label and a price associated with it. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna keep it pretty JavaScript light, so let's see. I think what we'll basically end up doing here is um, auto generating the label for the choices uh, to insert the price. So we'll have these subscription types. I won't deviate too much from this. I was just wondering if I could have a component for the medium, like PDF and paper, or both PDF and paper, and then a like a attribute for the if they want true cost, or if they want low income or international. But if I, I think if I just keep it simple, and So I have a type, a price, and then I'll have to have an internal key. That should work. Like a slug, essentially. Let's go with that. I'm just trying to think if I might need to dynamically calculate the cost or if we can, because this is just done in one page, basically, one view. If we're going to have more of a wizard structure. So let's first, uh, so we do need a, an app for this.
and this will be a subscription. Everything else mostly is singular. Orders. I think a lot of this is going to come from the order and what I'd like to do almost is factor uh, in the order we have very specific addresses it almost would be good to say recipient address and then have street address Postal code, PO box number, locality, region, country, all in the, another model and address the model, but um, didn't quite do that. So th this early decision will allow these modules to deviate. I believe we'll be using Braintree, so I'm going to essentially copy most of this. And then just remove the parts that haven't been decided on yet. So leave that open. And when I double click, it should stay open there. So the first thing is this is called a subscription. And clusterable model, I forget why I used that here. I think it had something to do with the fact that we have order items associated with orders. In this case, I think we can just use a regular Django model. So yeah, I'm just going to use a standard Django model. Let me look up this shortcut for multi-cursor.
looks good. I don't believe we need the recipient right now. We didn't agree at least at this stage to have subscriptions on behalf of somebody else. But before I delete these, <clears throat> we do want to borrow this model. And I, I think I'm just going to have to refactor this later. Um, giving my future self some technical debts here. Um, we should just really have a street or like an address model. So I would just say recipient address and then all these fields would be factored into that. We're only repeating ourselves once. If I repeat the use of this model a second time, then that's when I'll seriously consider refactoring. I gotta get a minimum viable release here for review next week. So. Again, we're just gonna do some multi cursor. Just checking out, these are all address related, all right? So, the multi cursor shortcut for selecting all occurrences of the current selection is Control Shift L. Another problem, allowing people to select their country separate from subscription co cost international paper uh, could lead to user error. So I could say I'm, I'm wanting international paper for although I live in the United States or low income paper even though I, I live outside the United States. So. Mm, this is not an ideal solution. I think this feature is going to be one of the earlier ones where JavaScript, just sprinkling in a little bit of JavaScript will be handy. I don't want to commit to a whole JavaScript front end. I think that's ludicrous. Uh, and I'm, yeah, just continually, just, uh, I don't know, surprised at how eagerly people just have gone down that rabbit hole, almost to full circle to having now server side rendered templates, which is basically where we started with PHP and you know Django and Ruby on Rails. I, I don't want to go in that like chasing tail circle, uh, introducing all that complexity, front end bloat, and just fatigue from keeping up with all these changes. Yeah, so I do value JavaScript. I think it's got a good purpose, but not to consume the whole front and the whole templating language and everything. And to that end, just briefly, I've been checking out, you know, view, seen or lit dom. No, 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 light dom is actually how I can keep my JavaScript minimal, but sort of get the benefits of this reactivity and declarative templating. So by default, HTML is a declarative templating language. It's very good for layout, more or less. It's got some idiosyncrasies uh, with uh, HTML and CSS. Uh, but I think that's a good place to invest time and energy to learn. But these dynamic update, you know, dynamically updated web uh, front ends where when one selection will you know, tr trigger data updates or, or selecting the country will populate a field. You know, you can't really do those with static HTML and CSS, right? So there's some uh, need for that and to, to balance that declarativeness of the layout and the reactivity, um, I think there's some middle ground there right, with having to dedicate to a full, you know, JavaScript build system and reactive um, f front end framework or library consuming everything I think you know and then going full circle again to then have to figure out how to render all those on the uh, 
server side to get quicker paint, time to paint, and things like that, which is already done by the by Django. So basically, light DOM and view both allow you to sprinkle in a little bit of a JavaScript to an existing HTML template. It gives you uh, lifecycle hooks, reactive data binding, two-way data binding, um, and you can do your uh, templates with template literals or or using my preference is to use uh, XML or HTML uh, with a little bit of intuitive um, interpolation of the variables like the dynamic data into the template and it even allows you know more or less full JavaScript inside there so n not to get too carried away with JavaScript I think but yeah if you not have to write helpers to do things that are already part of you know uh, JavaScript APIs so yeah I'll probably be crossing this bridge soon I'm leaning right now towards light DOM or view and uh, any suggestions or feedback is welcome yeah I think there's a lot of potential with this type of approach it, to, it strikes to me a good middle ground okay so let's hop back over but keeping things static for now so i deleted this field these fields are used by wagtail to auto generate the admin editing form which is really handy Now we have a given name and f family name. And at the end of the day, another thing I just remembered is we do want to keep around some of the capabilities of CVCRM. And one of the things that a CRM system does is it gives you one central location for all of the constituents who have um, interacted with your organization. A constituent is somebody who has an interest in your organization has done something donated or attended an event or worked there or registered a kid for summer camp or anything like that those are constituents that's your constituency they've supported your work in some way and the data model in CVSRM is you know all of your contacts go into a contacts bucket um, and then you do things to re create relationships between contacts like a person might be a member of another organization who is also in your constituency list. Now what I'm doing here, this naive and get it off the ground approach, it's not gonna give us that central uh, contact store. We're gonna have different buckets where people's data is spread between subscription instances and orders. So up front, I'm acknowledging that this is subject to change. I will look at unified data model um, I recognize that this is not the ideal approach here, but I just don't have uh, clarity on how to reconcile this for the time being. So I'll have to do more thinking about it. I, I just want to get an M MVP out the door here. And hopefully I don't just paint myself in the corner where I will make that refactor too difficult later. Both subscribers and addresses. Or people and addresses, I should say. Okay, so we've got a given name and family name and these are again modeled after the schema.org email street address and all these address components are modeled after schema.org <coughs> excuse me uh, shipping costs so let's can remove that okay so we got the given name family name email street address post box number postcode and the paid is metadata to track that the uh, brain tree transaction was successful and we don't have any subscription items that I'm aware of so I think it's just gonna be one subscription has a now comes the metadata around 
the subscription type. And this will be a string field. I believe our character field. And to get it off the ground, we're going to create a subscription. So the choices is, uh, let's take a quick look at the documentation. It's an array or a list of tuples or tuples. I don't know how you pronounce that. I think it's tuple, but uh, two vowels go walking. The first one just is talking would tell me tuples, but English is a messy language. All right, so they, do, they say this is... Um, now, here's where I'll need two layers here because we're putting the the price in the UI. We want to tell people what the price is. And, you know, since it's in the dropdown, I probably don't have to calculate it here. CBCRM does this for us by default. And I didn't fidget with it too much because going to Drupal CBCRM route meant I had didn't have to write any code whatsoever, but it also meant that I couldn't really um, or I had more difficulties when I wanted to customize things. And ultimately we decided that if now we need to customize things and write code, we're probably gonna wanna write Python instead of PHP uh, while somehow keeping in contact with CBCRM because it's really good. Okay, so back to the problem at hand. We have the label, which should include the price. So it's like an F string basically. And I want that to be data driven so that the price will reflect the actual data that's used and this subscription cost calculations so that they don't go out of sync. I don't have to drag along labels that are incorrect. Um, so let's just get this into the UI first, though. And they're using a... I think I can just do it with a, um, a list... Uh, What's that called? The list comprehension. I'm just trying to think of how I'll model this. So, this will be a list of dictionaries. So a string string int. The thing is, key and label are, are specific to HTML, and we're going to map that. The choice is this represents the key, this represents the label. So I'm not sure if these are subscription ID. Slug, let's do slug name, price, something like that. Okay. So 
PDF. 
print and PDF, um, that would constitute more price. Uh, I don't know how this is done, but uh, just flippantly, uh, it might be interesting if, uh, well, when buying the print, if you just automatically entitled to the PDF, it would make sense. I think some of the publishers of uh, technical books do that, like Manning, Manning, for example. But in any case, yeah, I think this is a pretty good pricing, pricing structure. And she's saying print and PDF, so I'll just say. Print PDF regular cost price. Uh, print PDF true cost price. I'm not going to get too verbose with these identifiers. 96. All right. Then what we've got is two and three three year subscription uh, periods that will give you 10 and 25 dollar discount respectively. Everything's in dollars. We're pretty much oriented towards the United States, uh, but in any case, now. We've got these, so what we've got to do oh, okay, come on. Oh, I see. Must have cut oh boy. Copy the text equals Yeah, this is too big to do in just a uh, list comprehension, I think. Let's try it out. Just double checking, can you use, can you do multi-line list comprehensions? Multi-line. Right, because sorry, I'm thinking loud. I'm going to use a function here uh, because uh, since what we're doing is uh, I'm not thinking loud. I need to think loud more often here. Uh, too much in this comprehension. Well, I'm generating subscription type choices. So yes, here we go. Probably in the own library, but right now it's going to go right in my model file. What do I got in my clipboard? Oh, yeah. Okay.
Ah, come on. All right, so yeah, we're just you know creating this list and going through each of the types and prices, creating a label, combining the uh, you know the human friendly label and the price there, and do we need a dollar sign? Dollar sign is good. I'll just follow the formatting rules, the formatting style from the other website. There we go. And using the slug as the choice slug sort of uh, key here and then the value which okay key value pairs will be the choice label I believe this will work now mmm these need to be so I'm probably just doing things like JavaScript oh boy <laughs> Is there a better data structure here than a dict? Um, literal? Or should I be using the, the dict method to generate this? Is there something else like data class? I don't know. That could help me get the same repeatable structure, and then I need to validate it as well at some point. But Good manual work here. Oops. Which is error prone. All right. settings mmm yeah uh, so I got a typo there subscription He caught that, but I didn't notice the squiggles earlier. Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. I think I'm confusing Python and JavaScript, maybe. I don't know. It's good to just, <laughs> it's good to be probably glot, but. Confusing. If you can get to know one language, good. And I'm mixing my quotes. I think it'll create a more sane developer experience, which is why I would like to just avoid too much JavaScript here and not have to write a JavaScript front end framework or all my code in a JavaScript heavy front end framework. All right. Oh boy. 
same thing. And just doing the single quote thing to be consistent with the code above. All right, are we good to go? Please, field panel now. Uh, yeah, this is just an import. I didn't get my Wagtail imports in order. Wagtail admin edit handlers field panel. I think you know this is true in code. I don't have an ID defined, but Django does internally define that field. So I believe that's I can ignore that. Now let's go ahead and run the server and let's get this in the Wagtail UI. I'll just start with the admin section to see that these fields are going to render correctly. So to do that, we create by convention Wagtail docs. Say to create Wagtail hooks .py, I believe it is. Let me see if I can copy and paste some code from another another app. I'm prone to start using admin.py because essentially what this is doing is registering things from the for uh, the admin Wagtail admin that is. Not the Django admin, so it's slightly different, but uh, still somewhat the same. I'm just going to copy everything and chisel away subscription. We're a bunch of stuff. But for now, I'm going to keep it consistent with other things. So we'll need model admin. Probably not model admin group. Because I don't believe we'll have maybe that we'll turn it here. I think we'll just have a, a listing of subscriptions. So from subscription, how can I models import subscription? We don't need the orders. And let's see here. This has got search fields and inspection view fields. So I'll go with, I'll keep that. It gives me more substance to work with without having to use my brain powers, which is diminishing. Paper O looks good. Yes, font awesome from five. Which we're using, so.
don't think we're going to need the inspect view. I'm just I'm trying to think real quick. Uh, yeah, we might want to actually inspect the address and things like that. So yeah, why not? Let's just keep it like this and uh, add the address fields in just a minute. I want to see if these things are working. I might need to take a small break. And this has not been created yet. Are we ready, Wagtail? Okay, and I'm not logged in. It's my super secret test password. Wagtail admin, we. The Explorer, this is the Explorer, shows all the pages and lets me navigate. It's this top one as far as I understood, but maybe I was wrong. Uh, so what did I do wrong here? I'm going to have to use the restroom here a second. Slightly simpler model admin register hmm. departments. Contacts is not simpler events. Probably something obvious I'm overlooking here. The hooks. So yeah, event model admin and here from model admin. Model admin uh, registers. Got those. Then we have our model. Then I create a class subscription. Telling it the model, menu label, subscriptions. This shouldn't matter that much. Start the server. There it is. Yeah, so sometimes you just gotta restart the server. I guess when doing wagtail hooks, it's good to restart the server. Uh, okay, so firstly, this little icon's not there, that's a bummer. But we'll get to that subscribe email. This is Boolean. Oh, that's hard to see. Yeah, that's not a good day. UX there.
added this to the fuel panel. Yes, okay, things are working pretty good. As expected, I believe this is edging up on a good stopping point. Um, so yeah, I'll get, uh, let me think here in a second. Yeah, I think this is decent, it's been an uh, hour and a half, that's a good amount of chunk of time to work on this. Made some good progress. In the next session, I'm going to Hopefully I have feedback from Mary, unless I do a session uh, to, again tomorrow, for example. Um, but the important thing will be now to hook this up to payments and we'll have to calculate costs based on the duration, which isn't here. I have to add the duration field as well as low income discount. So there will be a function needed to calculate the final cost from this base cost. Very cool. All right, well, thanks for everyone who joined on Twitch. I hope I'm not cutting out right after you left. I just see that there's one more uh, viewer there. Um, this has been another uh, Code Buddies Hangout where we've been working on some Wagtail and Django for quite a while. We've been building a website from scratch, uh, including payment processing, bookstore, subscription model, magazine, uh, multimedia library, several features is actually a production website. So it's been a long series and it'll be continued. We hope to have this project wrapped up next month though and deployed. So nearing the deadline. This subscription feature is the last major feature and it's gonna cut through the website because once we have uh, the ability to subscribe and pay for the subscription, then it needs to be fed into the magazine uh, page. And when you're viewing each magazine issue and articles, it needs to be subscription aware uh, for the latest three uh, issues to render in limited view to non-subscribers. Okay, well, thanks again for watching. If you're on YouTube, please uh, do uh, feel free to leave any questions or comments. I, I respond to those pretty promptly. If you've got any suggestions, I'm also uh, eager to hear those. Doing a lot of this stuff uh, manually, not incorporating any large frameworks, not just the JavaScript ones, but even things on the back end like um, Django Oscar e-commerce. I'm trying to keep the code really clean and simple and uh, specific to our purposes. Cool. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.